Hey, welcome back to another episode for Life for Living Well. My name is Richard. Before I dive into the podcast this week, I quickly like to say, uh, like normally say, if you like to know one or two things about the Life for Living Well community, you can find out more on our website at www.lifeforlivingwell so you write it together.com and you can also just throw me any questions or fire me uh, your message or feedback uh, which is very much appreciated so then I will be able to get back to you as soon as possible so once again you can find the community website so where we release a newsletter weekly an article on the blog and then on the website, we also put some books that can be very helpful to all your personal growth. And we would like to have it on it as well. So let's get diving for this week. So for continuous from the last week of setting goals. So this week, we are looking to challenges that we may face when we desire to set goals. And how do we navigate around the challenges? So, because if I tell you that you just write your goal and it just happens, it's not always that way, or you have your goals in your head and you just make it happen, it will not happen that way. So this week, I'm purely focused on challenges. So we continue to use Albert Einstein uh, open quotes that I started in the last two weeks uh, because it's still relevant to this particular topic. So today is setting goals, challenges. So the challenges that attach in setting goals. Why setting goals is very difficult for a lot of people. So Albert Einstein once said, if you want to live a happy life, tell it to a goal, not to people or things. So, and it's so true, and you wonder why many people don't do it. However, have you ever wondered why setting goals can be so challenging? So, in this podcast this week, we will focus on a few reasons why goal setting is difficult, such as setting vague goals, unclear actions and plans and most especially overthinking when goals are unclear few things will happen we quickly lose momentum which end up leading us to frustration and may cause us to abandon them Another crucial element that affects achieving goals is unmanageable emotions. We live in a time of instant gratification, so easily our attention is being caught or pulled from different directions. Someone that I know that is so industrial, is so creative, and they are doing really well in their personal life in their business world so they are having different kind of entrepreneurship that they are running and it's so fascinating when you talk to that young individual like that and then they tell you that the one thing that they are working on is self-discipline so you ask them why self-discipline is so important to them right now so they say it will help them to focus their attention to a particular thing that they want to do so and you kind of see where they're coming from because they already have a self-discipline but they think that that self-discipline if it's so good enough for them they might have achieved more than what they currently achieved this individual is very driven which is fine but setting goals and knowing a way what is sabotaging you to achieve it is a different is another level of awareness that 
required to actually make our goals come to true. So we live in a time of instant gratification. So if we fail to be intentional toward our goals, few things will happen. We become subject to our emotions. And when we become a servant of our emotion, it's not always a great master over you. For example, if a writer only writes when they feel like it, or someone want to increase their financial security, but often spend beyond their means, their emotions can control them. And as a result, lead to self-sabotage when confronted with challenges. So the tendency to jump on an idea without proper planning is common. You get inspired, you you have in a shower, it and they are come up to your head. And the zeal and the desire to get started quickly come upon you without fully able to do either a primary or secondary research about the field that you are going. And now, one day, on my way to Spain, so I was traveling from my city down to London, so I had to catch a flight. So while I was in the train, the, the man that we shared the coach together, he sat beside me and we were talking. So I was reading the book. I don't actually remember the book. So we were talking about the book I was reading after a few minutes that I took a seat and we talked like so I inquired what does he do and he said he's a wine merchant that he have a different as a few uh, store and also do like distributing to hotels across the country so I asked him and I asked him, what is the most challenging that he's facing in this industry? And so he told me the problem he's facing. So one of those problems is they are, so when they do delivery, some of the wine in the bottle, because they haven't opened the box. So when the people that bought this wine from them open the box, some of the content in the bottle is not get full to the level that they want it, so they will return everything and they already open the box. Sometimes they, in the warehouse, when the staff are moving it from this day, they also experience a lot of broken bottle of wine, so that that heavy cost. So he wanted to reduce the loss on the cost for the business. So I asked him. What are you trying to do? So he said he can't find any solution in the market. So he was thinking by some kind of scanner that can... So he thought like something similar to MRI scanner that used in, the, in radiology in the hospital. And he said it was something that can see what is inside the, uh, inside the box before they actually open the box because when they open the box and it's not filled to the level that they want it it, and the buyer return it back to them that's extra cost on the business and he said the only scanner that i've seen go cost him half a million pounds five hundred thousand pounds and he said the business can avoid that amount of money at this stage so he told me that, and he then asked me, what did I do? So I told him, and I said, maybe I might be able to help. So, and he gave him his card, and he said, if I find a solution, I should ring, I should give him a ring. Which is good, so I was in the plane on my way to Spain. Two hours flight, it looked like a 10 minutes flight. Because from the start, I was trying to think of different way of solving the same problem that the guy was telling me. 
and in my head, I wasn't so many idea pop sense. At that time, the plane is actually going through a troubling period because you see, the storm was so much that I don't think I've experienced anything like that before. People are screaming, but I just have the notepad in my hand. I have the habit of carrying a small notepad in my, in my pocket and a pen. And that distracts me from the stop. And I'm not even sure that the plane may arrive to the destination. So I was writing the idea. During this period, an idea come to my head. And it's an idea is using the weight to solve the problem. What would be the weight of the content when it's in the right level when the six bottle in the box and it filled to that content what would be a weight that accurate weight that suggests that the bottles in the box are filled to the right level and it was our moment so now is to write a software that can use a bluetooth or wireless to capture the reading from the weight into the app and the app who said their product is valid or invalid so they can correct it for the warehouse before they send it to the buyer so that is one part so i sent the guy a proposal and he was so happy and he wanted me to do it but then i did not want to just solve that problem for one person i want to see whether this problem is affecting the whole of the industry so i took a primary research by going into even bigger merchants and i try to ask them if they have this similar problem it turned out that for a bigger merchant this is a very small problem for them so they won't even spend the time to want to solve it but for a small business like these acquaintances that I made, it's a big problem for them. And they are overhead costs. They try to reduce it. And that will solve the problem for them. So, and at the end, I did. So that's what come up with that. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes it is important to know that when they you pop up with the ideas of something there is tendency to just jump to it without doing proper research without breaking it down sometimes primary research may not be possible for you to do but you have available information out there today that you can do a secondary research and from secondary research you can also get perhaps a valid information that you need to the industry that you're going to start so let's say you're going to start a company or business that's a source trader and you never trade in that field before it doesn't take you harm to take a little time to do primary or secondary research to speak or become accustomed to the people that are already in that feed, know your competitor and see how your own product will be different. Sometimes your product could be very disruptive, which is also good for the business. But to just jump into things, I also met someone that started a family and he was pumping a lot of money into the family. So I asked, have you done family before? And he said, no. Why did you decide a family? It's just something that they always desire to have, to have their own farm, which is good. But I always, I then I begin to wonder that, what does it take this person to put thousands of pounds into this farm? And it's only just going to take them three hours of their time with 60 quid or 90 pounds to go to a, a seminar or training or information about farming, agro farming or eco farming or fintech farming, how they can expand and making the kind of thing. So they keep pouring more money. So recently after 
three years that we have not talking about the farm. So he said told me that they now open a fish side in the farm, but it's consuming a lot of their money, a lot of the investment putting up front to it. Again, when we don't have a plan, when we have the ideas that we want to do, we are not also willing to do the work that required to make it a success. So the tendency to jump on an idea without proper planning is common unless we are aware of this and ready to manage it. Dissecting, analyzing and having a proper plan in place is the key to achieving any goal. When a goal lacks clarity, proactive and a plan, it runs the risk of losing interest in the moment it becomes challenging and unprofitable. As Thomas Edison once said, recognizing opportunity is so difficult for most people because it goes around this goose in overalls, looking like hard work. Someone with clarity, proactive, and goals create and embrace this opportunity. So the question is, will you? As I'm bringing this toward the end, remember to overcome these obstacles, we need to take appropriate actions. One action required is clarity of purpose, becoming more proactive. That's the first steps. So we need to know why we are doing what we are doing. Stephen Covey stated this quality in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you have not read that book, I would suggest that you should give it a try. One of the books that will open your eyes, will inspire you, will really help you in learning how to set goals and making things happen in your life. Lastly, if you take anything away from this podcast, please make your goal specific, measurable, and time bound. Avoid vague goals such as I want money or I want a wife or I want a husband, or I want a family, or I want to start business. You need to know the amount of money, its purpose, and how you will generate it. In the case of money, most of the time it's simple. You will begin to receive money in proportion to the service you provide. Zig Ziglar said, You can have everything in life you want if you will just help other people get what they want. So if your service, if your solution solves problems for some people or many people, you will be paid back one way or the other. If your service is so expandable, you will also be paid back one way or the other. You can have everything. Sometimes creating a vision board and defining your goals require time and breaking them down into manageable steps. So goals like I want to, I want more money is not good enough. You be specific. I want hundred thousand pound a year I want two hundred thousand pound a year how why when so when in 2003 to 2004 December I want to be earning hundred thousand pound a year for I want to earn this money through multiple sources of income what skills do I have what skill can I train on? Can I do a side hustle? Can I sell something online? Can I change a job? Can I ask for increase, man? Can I do another extra income? So these are the things that we make your goals come to reality. So 
I hope this podcast helps someone. And until we meet again next week, please stay safe and have a wonderful week. Ciao.